All right, so you went to New York, huh? I did in April, right at the beginning of all this when all the shit was hitting the fan. So what made you kind of decide to do that as Let's far as be the do the travel nurse thing? Well, I had previously worked inner city um, ER for two years, got tired of that, decided to travel for a year, and that's basically a glorified travel assignment. I mean, you make a lot of money doing it, so I was like, why not? I'm already in this realm. Might as well take my butt out there and accomplish something. So that was kind of the main reason. Really, I mean, money talks. It's bad to say, but it does. And I also had just gotten a new job at that point, and I had all these skills and certifications and everything, and I felt like I was kind of wasting that with everything that was going on. And I felt bad for my fellow EM workers that everybody's just getting the shit beat out of them. And I was sitting behind a desk at that point, I guess. So a little bit there felt bad for my friends and family. Yeah. So, how was that? New York was rough. I mean, at that point, not much was known about COVID anyways, and I was in a unit. I was in an ICU unit. I am not ICU. I'm not ICU trained. Um, I watched people die every single day. I was also not trained that you keep people long term, so I was watching the same people die slowly all day, every day. We worked every day. 12-hour shifts. I worked nights, which I was used to, so that was fine. But just not prepared, I guess, for that slow decline. I've worked emergency medicine. I don't slowly watch people die. You're either dying then and now or not at all. So that was weird. Um, so that was pretty hard. Harder than I thought it was going to be. And you did it for how long? Only three weeks. And you were able to extend if you wanted to. And everybody's like, I'm going to, I'm going to. No, I had my calendar and I was marking down the days. Like, get me out of here. <laughs> Not a fan. Yeah. Did they do anything to, like, any type of training or anything to prepare you guys? I mean, I guess it was so new. Nope. You made a phone call. They expect you to be there within 24 hours. You got there. They gave you an assignment. You went to work. That was it. Dang. Yeah. Well, you're extremely ill-prepared, especially if you're not an ICU nurse and oh. used to a lot of those, the, what they do in the ICU. I was one of the most prepared nurses on my unit. I was working with OB nurses and ortho, me and one other ER nurse, not a single one of us ICU trained. We were the most knowledgeable. And our doctors, like I said, this was a made-up unit out of nowhere, was staffed with Navy doctors. One was a pediatric nurse practitioner. One was a neurosurgeon. Nobody had any idea what they were doing. No one. I'm not used to that kind of type of care. <laughs> Super disheartening. Uh, yeah, that's, well. I'll be honest, I didn't, I didn't expect to hear that. Uh, yeah. Neither did I. I, I. I'm not trying to be mean or anything like that, but the fact that you have people who are sick, well, it doesn't matter what sickness they have, in my opinion. You need to have people that are trained and ready to go and be able to give training people coming in something you know just not hey you're all oh, your nurse here you go there you know, that, wasn't a problem think about it though i mean because i answer these questions all the time still of like people like it's horrible out there they're killing people they're killing people that's what's happening when you are left with either me or no one that's what you get there aren't enough ICU trained nurses in the country to make that a thing oh you know I, what I, I, mean? I, I agree with that my mom she was even like well didn't these doctors learn about ICU care too? Yeah, in med school 30 yeah. years ago. You're right. They had a rotation through ICU. It's like, doesn't make me any more an ICU nurse as it does them a doctor. So at that point, it was such combat nursing that it was like, you either get us or you get no one. Which would you prefer? Well, wow. I, th I think that's a... That's quite a hit. I mean, I'm not... And nothing against you. Yeah. I'm not saying you're a bad nurse at all. And I wouldn't apply that. But that's... Well, the analogy she gave of yeah. combat nursing, I mean... That's that, exactly what it is. That's, that's exactly yeah, what that's it Yeah, that's what they compared it to. And it was... I mean, we were running people on weeks on portable vents, given by those, those government ones that were given out. Mm -hmm. Portable vents that are not mm -hmm. strong, not worth anything, for weeks. Their equipment, trash. 
we were flipping people. Um, we had an old lost and found bucket that we found like a neck pillow in from like to fly. We were flipping people and supporting them off a neck pillow. The one that we had. We didn't have pillows. We didn't have blankets. Our patients are intubated, freezing to death because their temperatures they can't regulate anyways. So, I mean, it was just... And these are pa- pa- patients of various ages too, yeah. right? Yeah. Old to young. Uh-huh. That muscle took a pretty heavy toll. It. I think it took a toll on me more so for the fact of like, I'm not trained to be okay with this type of care. And nobody was, and people were there for the money, and they're like, you know, I'm extending, I'm extending. I can't provide this care anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I just can't. 